Hello. Hello. Am I speaking with Gary Rothkin? Yes, you are. This is Adam Smith calling from the website. Hi, Adam. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, many, many congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so you just got the call from the committee a few minutes ago. What, what happened? Uh, I heard what sounded like an authentic call from the Nobel Committee. <laughs> <laughs> there's, always, let's, there's always a chance that it's one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so have your friends played pranks on you in the past? <laughs> Well, I best not say. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the um, the you know the call from Stockholm is mythic in the wor in the world of science, and I'm sure it's in literature too. <laughs> and maybe even the Peace Prize people uh, pull pranks on each other, although I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we think they might be too serious for that sort of thing. Yes, like, I think they're very serious. <laughs> uh, what were your first thoughts when you heard? Uh, well, it's just uh, surprise and, and, you know, oh boy, it's going to be a fun ride. Yeah, when you uh, and Victor Ambrose made the discovery of an entirely new uh, mechanism for regulating gene expression, you must, it, the thought must have occurred to you that it was Nobel-worthy. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, 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 at, at that moment um it was it was just a quirky what we're working on it was really interesting we were young faculty members uh wanting to make sure that we were successful at the next stage of our careers and it's so no, we weren't thinking this is going to win a nobel prize we were <laughs> thinking this is really interesting yeah it, it, you know, as the field exploded, which was just uh, a joy to watch, you know, then it, there was a sense that, that, you know, this is the sort of field, sort of sea change that um, gets awards and things. But that, that took a long time and, and, and was an unbelievable pleasure to, to participate in. The talent that got attracted to the field was magnificent and, uh, you know, the meetings uh, with, you know, 200 or 300 people was elect were electrifying and still still are great. So yeah. mm -hmm. It's really lovely to hear the way you say how exciting it is to feel, see the field, field build, because in some ways you might think the opposite. You might think, I like these, having these niche areas to myself and it's great. But it's such, it, it emphasizes the social side of the whole thing. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of interchange. One nice thing about you is that you took this career break between being an undergraduate and a graduate and going to grad school. Um, yes. You just went traveling, planting trees. Yes. It's nice for people. that you, It's not nonstop. You can take time to reflect. Oh, yeah. And that was an era where this linear path to career, career, career was uh, sort of not the norm. Um, I... It, although I wouldn't advocate it for everybody because there was a, it, there was a lot of uh, carnage in the process of, in my generation. But yeah, for me, uh, you know, I lived in my van for a year in the mountains of Oregon, planting trees, and then traveled all through Latin America. Uh, and I, I think one of the things is that I sort of, um, I had a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps to have... Um, uh, entertaining stories <laughs> and so you know um, I think for people coming to my lab you know this is like a different experience talking to me let me let me let me finish by asking how much you think it made a difference training with the right people because when it, when you did your postdoc training with Wally Gilbert and Bob Horvitz and, yeah and, well, they were super important I mean how much did they teach you if you like just to keep your eyes open for important questions. I suppose that might be the key. Well, these are role models for how to be a scientist and how to think um, about big problems. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was inspired uh, by them and, and even by people I didn't know, people I would see in the hallways. As an undergrad, I, was, I, I um, 
studied physics at Berkeley, and I was surrounded by these uh, mythic uh, physicists who, were, you know, were so important. So it just um, it's a sea change that you don't expect coming right out of high school, and all of a sudden you're you're seeing uh, people at the top of their game, and it's all they think about. What a, what an amazing introduction to science! Extraordinary. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, it's thank you. Adam. Do you think it's possible that you could send me a photograph? Is, is there somebody with you who could take a photograph of you right now and send it to oh, me? Oh God, I'm having a bad hair day, um, but <laughs> I can do it with, within two or three hours. How's that? Honestly, we've had laureates with um, in pajamas. We've had laureates in all sorts of lovely scenes. Of just okay, we'll 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 take a picture. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. You just heard a special episode of Nobel Prize Conversations. If you enjoyed this moment, you won't want to miss a single episode of our podcast. Be sure to subscribe. We're available on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many, many more popular platforms. Thank you.